tired? What, it's day four? Have you yeah. been working the whole? Yep. <laughs> okay. So we're not getting you fresh. <laughs> so season two, what are you most excited about? I think I'm most excited, I mean, I, I do, I'm not just saying that, I do legitimately love Bracken's character. How his character plays off of Black Saturn is really, really fun. So that's fun, and we have a Days of Future Past episode that we're doing where we get to see the future versions of the characters, and that's, yeah, that's super fun. And we have sort of a riff on Galactus at one point, which is a lot of fun as well, but I think overall, it's doing a season of the show once we've kind of figured the characters out. I think season one was all about, dear God, what's funny about this character, <laughs> and, uh, what, what's good, at, like, and then the actors come in and they bring another flavor to it. And so it's not until towards the end of the first season that you really know what your show is. And so just going into it with a little more confidence is fun. So yeah, so you both worked on Robot Chicken. And what would you say, especially for you, the biggest difference between working on a consistent story <laughs> as opposed to like the shorter kind of things that you would do on there? Um, the biggest difference is, and I've, the biggest difference is you don't have a rip cord you can pull if you're, if this thing you thought was funny ends up not being as funny as you thought it was. Like a robot chicken sketch, I think a lot of times you start writing it and you say, oh God, this is, this is, this is not the three page epic I thought it was going to be. <laughs> this is one joke and it's very stupid. So then you turn it into a five second sketch and Robot Chicken has a bunch of five second sketches. But this, if you, every joke has to build on a previous joke, build on the character, say something new about the character, and then keep building and building and building and evolve over time. So you just, it just has to be so much better thought out than a Robot Chicken sketch. <laughs> And the people and the characters have to be real characters that you would want to spend time with. I think a lot of Robot Chicken characters exist just for the, the joke, you know, and so they can be massive assholes or completely irredeemable. But our characters, you have to like them, or there's there's no point. Uh, so Brecken, I actually wanted to ask you because I was looking through your film history before we got here, and I just found your career arc to be very interesting. You started, yeah, started out. <laughs> You started out in sort of like these very you know, g generic protagonist roles, but now you've really sort of, in my opinion, found your swing in sort of these characters like you got the Titan Maximum as Reggie, as Boba Fett from Robot Chicken. You've really found it in sort of these like jerk douchey. Douchey characters. <laughs> and I'm just kind of curious, was, was that always your sort of sense of humor and you finally found a an avenue for it? Or did you just sort of meet Zeb and Seth and you're like, Oh, I could do that. I could definitely be a uh, like no, this back. I think it's similar to what was saying about <laughs> the characters, about, I think with superheroes in general, I didn't, I, I didn't do a bunch of comic reading and stuff, but you know, watching superhero movies, watching, you know, cartoons and whatnot. Once you think about the reality of a superhero, the first thing that comes to mind is they must be so fucking cocky. Because it's just like they're, better than everyone else, you know what I mean? And so when we first started doing Robot Chicken, when it was Superman, it was, it was like, this guy must be cocky. Like, behind closed doors, there's no way he's just like, all they do is need me. All they do is need They call me all the time, I have to help everybody out. And then with Boba, Boba Fett's my favorite character from the Star Wars world. Again, the guy had like, a line in, the, in Empire, and he became everyone's favorite. Just from one line, just because he's got a cool outfit. So again, it just lends itself to like, that's a cocky son of a bitch. It's just like, y'all called me, y'all just need me back, huh? Like, they didn't know he was going to be a Jedi, but everyone wanted him to be, you know, some of that. But, so I just think, the best thing about animation, as an actor, the best thing about animation is, I'll never, probably won't play Boba Fett live action anytime soon. <laughs> probably I'm not going to play Superman. Definitely not going to play Lohan or Jesus. So the fact that I get, you know, as an actor, you get to do that on, with animation is so much fun. And because we're all friends and stuff, we all want to make each other laugh. But um, Seth always says, Seth always jokes about, like, you know, I wish people could see the fun stuff. I wish you could get to do the stuff you do on our show mm. in live action. Yeah. Um, and I do too. Like There are times where I'm like, I wish I could bring that to my shows, to my movies and stuff like that. And you just can't. This person ever said my movies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a jerk, but I was. <laughs> what could go wrong? But I, 
I mean, because I had never met Bregan before we met in the Robot Chicken Writers Room. And I was so shocked by that, that sign. Like, he was so fucking funny in that, in that room, like, so quick-witted. Because he, I think he does, he, I mean, you do play, like, more, like, the straight-leading yeah. man type. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh my god, this man is hilarious. So, yeah, it would be fun to see... To see you just play a douchebag. Yeah, freaking <laughs> yeah. And you're talking about, like, Seth and I have a thing we're writing together right now, and it's that. It's like the idea of, like, all right, how, now that we know, now that we're all very comfortable with me being a douchebag, how do you present it to the mass? <laughs> uh, but that's the fun of animation, is you get to do all that different kind of stuff. Can you uh, talk about uh, Star Wars Detours, where that stands uh, at all? Screen of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, it stands in <laughs> a vault it, somewhere. Yeah, it yeah. under lock and key of Mickey. Like so, Disney has it. And Did you, like produce a full run. Yeah, I think that there are plenty of fifty episodes. <laughs> yeah, I think all done. we wrote a boatload, and I think they finished. I think over thirty of them. Yeah. Um, it's done and voiced. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you know, look, nothing Star Wars has ever not come out, even the holiday special. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully at some point, I get why it initially it didn't come out. The reason it got shelved to us was they were coming out, they were coming out with these movies, jo jo George sold it to Disney, I can call him George, George sold it to Disney, <laughs> and the first thing they want to have come out that's the new Star Wars world is probably not going to be the funny anime. But wait, let the movies do their thing. And then hopefully now that it's reintroduced everyone and all the young kids love it as much as they do, now we can be like, all right, now we can poke a little fun in ourselves and release, hopefully release detours. Um, we, I mean, it is, it still has been the dream job for every single so writer much fun. and voice actor on that show to work with George and, I mean, literally to work like this, like this with George Lucas at and the ranch. create characters at the ranch <laughs> and goofing off with him and stuff like that. It's still the highlight. That's the make a wish we've all been doing. Now you bring up the holiday special. I remember that night <clears throat> where we were gonna watch. We were gonna watch it at Skywalker Ranch. Yeah. We found it, <laughs> and the the fire department was like they knew that Se uh, Bracken was gonna be there and Seth was gonna be there. So we were like, yeah, let's go watch a movie with these guys. That'll be awesome, you know. So these these big dudes get up there, throw their feet up. Ten minutes into the start of this holiday special, like, we gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go. I think there's a uh, fire. Yeah. They start have, fire. Have fun, nerds. Yeah. <laughs> it was really sad. And it was also, by the way, you forget how long the special is. It's it clips on YouTube. It's terrible. You watch the long version of it at Skywalker, <laughs> sitting in a screen room. At some point, everyone did a... <laughs> yeah. Just wondering how much longer it we got. Sure to watch. was funny for five minutes. Yeah, but now we got you know the Wookiee family are just jerking off. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. Is Papa Wookiee going to masturbate? Yeah. What is happening? Yeah. Oh, he is masturbating. He is masturbating. Okay. Got it. Great, great, great. It's bananas. <laughs> Does the Disney uh, deal affect in doing any robot chicken Star Wars specials? I don't. I think so. No, I think Kathleen, but we, uh, Kathleen Kennedy's been on board. And, uh, we haven't done another one. We haven't talked about it yet. Yeah, it just feels like after three, I think everyone just felt like we had done it. And I know we all wrote on them, and it was like, we were coming up with some weird shit to make sketches <laughs> about. Like, maybe let them make three more movies. Yeah, we need some new info. Yeah, we need some new info here. We were down in there scraping. Yeah. Yeah, we need to re rebuild the book. We're going to go through it. Yeah. Uh, so, Brecken, I want to ask because uh, in the in your previous answer, you were saying that you didn't read comics growing up, and you were just sort of thinking about Superman and uh, Boba Fett as just just sort of concepts. And I'm just kind of curious if you felt that uh, the fact that you weren't sort of inundated as much as Seth was was yeah. sort of a positive asset that you could bring a new perspective. And how has that changed as you sort of gotten more involved with it, and more, read more? I still have. I think it, but I. <laughs> 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 and I won't. And I won't. <laughs> but I, I uh, to answer his question, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was super valuable. I think it's always super valuable to have someone in the room that's that's the outsider perspective. Yeah. Like I don't think any of us would have come up with that take on Superman. That whole oh well, I'm Superman. <laughs> so, I mean, Brecken saw that and was instantly just like oh I don't need anybody. I'm a, I'm a I'm a massive jerk with my head up my ass. Yeah. <laughs> And all of us who were growing up and revering Superman never would have come up with right, that. Right, he's sacred. So, yeah, he's yeah, sacred. And, we don't, and, and for Bregan to come in and instantly see that. And we have another writer who 
barely knew Star Wars and called the Millennium Falcon a flying saucer as he was writing it, but, <laughs> but it, you know, just had a skewed take and ended up writing some of the funniest sketches, so yeah. I, I think it's really, very, very valuable. And we have, the good thing about the Robot Chicken, and now it's getting less so because everyone's learning about it, but like, I used to say, in our room, there's guys who could tell you what Boba Fett ship's called, then there are people who could tell you what it runs on, and then there's people who could tell you who built it. <laughs> And I think it's good to have all this perspective, so you don't just get nothing but inside baseball, yeah. super inside comic book world where I'm like, I don't even know, like, he, I just asked him what day, present, future, head, Yeah, head, days of future past. <laughs> right, like, I, I had to get that yeah, explained yeah, to me about what that was. And then you know when he asks, you have to explain it in one sentence, <laughs> or, or his eyes will close. <laughs> yeah, you're going to stop out. He'll stop and you're the asshole sitting there explaining. No, oh, Kitty Pryde's brain was transferred into... <laughs> Literally, just the fact that he said, yeah, Kitty Pryde, that's enough. Yeah. Keep going. Right, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Done. So, yeah. It seems, um, the Jubot was easily converted. Into, into Jubot, might he, uh, be easily converted? Could he ever be, like, Scientology Bot or Catholic Bot? Yeah, I think, I think we, we want to play with that a lot more in Season 2, because I think that... He is just putting out feelers and trying to find an identity because he wants to be a human so badly or, or find some sort of identity besides just a robot. So we have, uh, I'll give you a little a little spoiler, we have an emo bot showing up <laughs> where he has a little bit of a crisis and that ended up being really fun. And I really liked in season one when he turned off his Wi-Fi and became the hick bot. And that, was, that was really fun. So. We want to find. We want to do that as often as possible. So, how did you approach making a Christmas episode? Well, it was funny because <laughs> we weren't planning on doing a Christmas episode, and then suddenly they're like, "Hey, we should do a Christmas episode." And if you, we want to do a Christmas episode, we need the script yesterday. Oh. And so they're like, "So we can't do one." But I was like, "Oh, I really, really want to do one." So I had to write it super fast, and I just had an idea about Santa Claus, if somebody wishing for Santa Claus uh, with a Mr. Mixelplick type character, uh, Impossible Man character, and if you were blinked into existence like that, maybe you would have a hard time adjusting. So it's about Santa Claus with all these weird Santa powers that don't make sense. Like being able to bend space and time to deliver a billion <laughs> presents every night, and then his brain kind of going off and uh, kind of turning to goo and him going crazy. All right, thanks Thank so much.